Hello and welcome to Springs of Life on Dove Television. I am Lillian Ogedegbe and I'm so grateful to God to be here today. So from wherever part of the world you have connected to us from, I'm saying welcome to Redemption City here in Nigeria. And this is where we are reaching your life from the studios of Dove TV. Now today on Springs of Life, we have an interesting topic. So it's another time to listen to the word of God. You know, we cannot live without the word of God. The word of God is life. The word of God is light. The word of God is the truth. The word of God is Jesus. And so you need Jesus in your life to live life and life in abundance. And you need Jesus as the light to illuminate your word and your life. And so today we are going to understand God's mind for us today. I'm so excited to be here today and I know you are. Well, Spirits of Life is a Bible-based program on Dove TV where we discuss the Word of God. And every time we have a vessel prepared by God to minister God's Word to us. Today, we have been joined by one of our pastors in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. He's a youth evangelist in charge of RCCG Region 4 and Region 24. God bless you so much for joining us. And hello, Pastor. Welcome to Springs of Life, sir. Good morning, man. Morning to you, sir. How are you doing? I'm good, and you? I'm very well, thank God. How is kingdom advancement, kingdom increasement, kingdom advancement projects and um, work in your hands, sir? God is faithful. God is faithful. Thank you so much, sir, for honoring our invitation today. You're welcome, man. So today on Springs of Life, like I said earlier, we have an interesting topic to discuss. And I know that as you pay rapt attention, God indeed is going to transform your word because the word is a seed that comes in into you. At this moment, we'd like to talk to God in short words of prayers. We invite his presence and we ask our pastor to lead us. Father, we say thank you for another opportunity. We appreciate you, Lord. We come into this program. Lord, take absolute control in the name of Jesus and let your will be done in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. So at this time, child of God, because it's a Bible study on television where we search through the scriptures, we'd like you to please get your Bible. You need that to keep very close to you. Get your cell phone because at some point in the course of the conversation, our phone line will be displayed on your TV screen and we'd like you to please call or send an SMS to us. Another thing you need to get is something to journal on. So get your Bible, get a notebook or something to write down. You need to write down some points. It could be prayer points. It could be something you find interesting you would like to probably read um, later. Please get your journal and put that uh, ready to you. God bless you. Um, call your friends, call your family members. We're just about to have an awesome time in God's presence. And our topic today is transformation. Transformation. What is the mind of God consigning transformation? So, Pastor, we're looking at transformation. We'd like to look at God's perspective when it comes to transformation. You know, transformation could mean different things to different people as a definition is relative. But from God's mindset, God's perspective, what is transformation, sir? Human. Now, the God perspective about transformation, we can take that from the book of Romans, chapter 12, okay. verse 1 and 2. Romans, chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, only acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect, will. the will of God. So the God perspective about transformation for his children is to renew their mind and change within, change in conduct that lead to change of life. Because every changes that will transform a life must start within. Changing the conduct that leads to the change of life. Yes, ma'am. And these changes start from within. So, having said that, the word of uh, transformation is of two words. The word trans and formation. Now, the word trans simply means across, to go beyond, and to cross a path. Why the word form simply means to create something, to give a life to something, to give a shape or structure 
to something. So when you're talking about transformation, it's a process of giving life or a shape or a structure either to a life, to a nation, or an individual. So the word transformation, there is no one that can transform his or her generation until the transformation starts within. So the emphasis is within. Because a man cannot be greater than his thought. So a man is a reflection of his thoughts. Yes, ma'am. Bible said in book of Proverbs 23, verse 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. And transformation, you begin to see until you begin to see things. In God's perspective, your life may not be transformed. The problem has never been God. The problem has never been devil. The problem is you. For instance, for every problem, there is a solution according to God's word. To the sick, the transformation in need is healing. Now, for a sinner or somebody who struggles with sin, the transformation in need is righteousness. And every of these, there is a solution of it in the scripture. For instance, for the sick, maybe you are sick and you have been trusting God for healing. That means you need transformation in your health. Now, there are many specific God's words that address this. And one of it, Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent out his word, and his word, he lets yes. them and deliver them from that destruction. Joel chapter 3, verse 10b. Joel chapter 3, verse 10b. He said, let the weak say, I am strong. Now, that cannot be understood by a carnal mind. The things of the spirit can only be understood by the things of the spirit. For instance, when a dog back to an human being, they see it as barking. But to a fellow dog, is speaking. So until you are in the spirit, you cannot understand the things of the spirit. So until you begin to see things in God's perspective, you may not have a transformed life. Isaiah 33 verse 24 b that scripture has blessed me more than 20 years. Isaiah 33 verse 24 b He said, and the inhabitant of Zion shall not say I'm sick. So as a Zion dweller, you are not even expected to say you are sick. <laughs> Matthew 8, 17 b he himself took right, away right. our family. So if he took it, that means he's no longer there. So until you have this kind of mindset in the same way that God, now let me say this, until you see things the way God said it, you will not have it the way God intended it. So there can never be a transformation until you look at things the same way God said. Why? You are a product. It takes a manufacturer to know the end product or anything that has to do with the product. So when there is the full product has any faulty, they take it back to the manufacturer. He can fix it because he has the manual. Now, when you have a guardian, you can't operate, you go through the manual. And the word of God is the manual. So at any given point, the Bible says when man slept, an enemy came. Maybe due to insensitivity, and the enemy have come some damage in one area and caused some deformity. Deformity has nothing to do with physically. You can be deformed financially, you can be deformed mentally, you can deform it wisely. So, it, when you go back to your manual and you check, and in the beginning it was not so. Mm. So, when I say this is not the real picture of my creator towards me, by checking that, you can go to reset. Mm. So, when you press reset, it takes you back to the original intention of the manufacturer for that product. So until you realize what God's mind is concerning your life, you cannot be transformed. Yes, ma'am. If God says you are wealthy, you cannot until you understand what wealth really is. Yes, ma'am. So the word transformation is so broad. For instance, your father in heaven is omnipotent God. You cannot behave as an impotent child. It's like you are, you, it's like you are not representing your father well. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, Verse 18, Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. So Bible I would talking. like us to actually go through the scriptures, okay, so everyone can understand. Okay. So let's go to Second Corinthians 3. 3, okay. Verse 18. Are 18. you reading or I should read? Second Corinthians 3, 18. Yes, ma'am. Okay, let me read stuff from okay, my He says that, but we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, and are changed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, that phase of beholding is talking about transformation. That beholding is talking about the process of looking at yourself 
in the mirror. Because God's word is a mirror. Right. So when you look at yourself in God's mirror, you can take care of any form of deformity. Either in marriage, in earth. Say, no, this is not supposed to be. I check the mirror, I can see something here. By checking the mirror, I remove it. So one of the easiest ways to check your deformity is through God's word, which also serves as mirror. So as you behold him, so God's word is the process through which we change or transform from one level of glory to another. So after, let's just um, make it a little bit practical. Now, after you checked yourself in the mirror before entering your car to the office, you are okay, everything says fine. And then you get to the road and someone says, why is your shirt rumpled? And you can like, no, it cannot be rumpled. I ironed and I checked myself this morning and I was good looking. So it can't be rumpled because you understand, you know who you are. So it means that when you study the word of God, you've seen God's perspective of you, who you really are. Yes. And then when the devil comes with some lies, you can say, no, no. That's not what God says. That's not what he said about me this morning. You are correct, ma'am. Thank you, sir. So the word transformation, just like I said in the first book we read in mm. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, mm. the emphasis they talk about the renewal of mind. Okay. So for any man that will have a transformed life must invest in renewal of mind. And how do we do that? Through scripture. So Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, he said, this book of the law shall not depart from you. Our generation are so lazy that we are far away from God's word. Mm. Devil does not have a new method. It's still the same method. Now, we can see devil tempted the first Adam with food. Mm. He tempted the second Adam with food. Right. And you can see the response of second Adam. Mm. The, second, the second Adam responded in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 10. It's like, and scripture also say, that also is additional knowledge. You must know more than the devil. Because devil also know the scripture. So if you don't know what the scripture have said concerning you, if you don't renew your mind according to God's word, you may be tempted to accept your destiny based on what society dictates to you. Hmm. Now, there's a, part, there's a particular song now going on, and it's a pity that many believers, they're already a victim of it. Now, they are saying their life is unavailable. Now, it doesn't matter how you try to color a song hmm. or put the name of Jesus on a thing, hmm. you cannot force God to say what God has not said. Hmm. So how do you check? What is the source of the inspiration of that song? You know, it's not from God. Hmm. So the more you are saying you are unavailable, of course, the power will be far away from you. Hmm. You will still come back to church and start praying. Because that was not what the scripture says. And the power of the tongue. Also. And the power of the song. Of the tongue. The power of the concept with the mouth. Hmm. The heart, mm. believe it. And mm. with the mouth, confession is made. Mm. Luke 21, verse 15. Luke mm. 21, verse 15. He said, I've given you a mouth mm. and wisdom in which no man can gain sin or resist. Numbers 23, verse 40. As you have said. Mm. In my, in my ear. So many people, their deformity is a function of what they say by themselves. Mm. Matthew 12, 37. Matthew 12, 37. He said, thou shalt be condemned and justified mm. by the word of your mouth. Some people say oh, they are stranded. No, you can't follow the word to say you are stranded. Why? Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The way, mash, the, way, uh, the way mouth version of that scripture, I read it 19 years ago. It said, the Lord is my shepherd. Before my need arise, supply is already waiting. Mm. So when you Hallelujah. have that kind of revelation, mm. you know before your need arise, mm. God's going to fix it. Mm. And Philippians chapter 4, verse 19 says, and the Lord shall supply. How many? Oh. All. My needs. Oh, my needs. So there is no so there is no transformation you are looking for. If only you can settle with God's word and renew your mind and upgrade your thinking. Until your thinking faculty is upgraded, your life cannot change. What is the easiest way to having a positive mind for the rest of my life? You know, having a conversation like you today, right, sir, can um, help me. Sometimes, help me for a while, you know, like after this conversation, I think positive, I imagine positive, I say positive things to the glory of God. But after a while, you know, it begins to die down because you come to see the reality of life that you can't say you, you have this when you are not seeing it physically, you know. So how do I stay positive minded for the rest of my life? What's the easiest way? Now, the easiest way is to continue to declare so, okay. even when situation does not look like it. For instance, in Romans chapter 4, Verse 20. Let's take that scripture. Romans 12. 4. Romans 4, 24. Romans 4, verse 20. Okay, verse 20. We're talking about when Abraham, who against hope, believe in hope. Okay. Let's take that scripture. Okay. 
Romans 4, yes. verse 20. Yes. He staggered not yes. at the promise of God, okay. that is Abraham, okay. through unbelief, okay. but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Now, there are times that after God gives you a prophecy or mm. a word, mm. the devil wants to make God to be a liar. Mm. That's one of the things. So the more you understand the scripture and stay on God's word. Now, talking about Abraham displaying of faith, mm. faith has to be at is the, the deposit base for faith. Mm. Then what is faith? I will define faith according to the acronym, F-A-I-T-H. What is faith? The F stands for feeding on God's word. Mm. Romans 10, 17, and faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the word of the God. Word. The A from the acronym of faith stands for acting on God's word. Mm. So feeding on God's word is not enough. Right. You need to act. You need to take steps. Now, the I, in the acronym of faith, talk about imagine God's word. That is the place of your mind. Right. Imagine what God says I am. Imagine what he says concerning my marriage. Imagine what God says concerning my earth. Imagine what God says concerning this. So, mm. until you create a picture out of God's scripture, mm. you, might, you might not able to future in your desired future. Mm. So, for every future we desire, there is a picture from that scripture. Mm. Now, the T from that word, Stand for talking the word, mm. in regardless of the problem, mm -hmm. in regardless of the, the situation. Even when the situation does not comply with God's word. Mm. Why the H from that acronym stands for hearing God's word, mm. continuous hearing. You can plug in to your ear, you can read it every day. So the more you read God's word, the more you get stabilized, even in the face of life or challenges the more you get stabilized even in the face of challenge you know here the bible tells us that abraham did not stagger yes he did not stagger at the promise of god you know when god has said something you're staggering you're shaking yes, you're man. like this you're not setting you're not standing upright you know he said abraham did not stagger at the promise of god now abraham does not stagger based on the philosophy of men because the philosophy of men says that any man or a woman will have entered a menopause. Mm. Now, the wife of Abraham, who happened to be Sarah, Sarah, mm. have already entered menopause times two mm. by 90. Mm. But from a, according to God's word, Abraham was able to discover that God said from that scripture mm. that it is a menopause, not a menostop. Mm. So when you pause a thing, you can replay it. Right. So if God can replay the destiny of Sarah at 90, Mm. He can replay any destiny. That mm. is a transformation life. Mm. So Abraham was not staggering concerning what the world say or the opinions of society mm. concerning what God has said. He staggered not and stood on God's word. So when you stand on God's word, it's just a matter of time. The devil fights him away. Mm. And that's what God wants us to know right now, that for us to be transformed, we need to hold on to his word. Yes. We need to have faith in his word. Let's look at the process of transformation. You know, I know these things don't just come like, you know, there's okay. either a process, you know, for, because it might sound strange, it might sound difficult for someone, like I said earlier, that mm -hmm. uh, hearing such words can actually help for a while. You know, you're strong in faith and you're moving. But after a while, it might just die down. So how, what is the process of growing in transformation of the life now, that God wants us to The process make? of growing to transformation in life, number one, you must identify the problem. You must identify the, the problem, problem. That you need to be transformed. You need to be transformed. Okay. And you must not justify your failure. Mm. The reason why many destinies are not being transformed, they try to find excuse for their failure. My parents are poor. So I they try to educated. shift responsibility to others. Mm. For any transformation to take place, you must identify the problem and admit that there is a problem. Okay. So until you tell yourself the truth, you may remain in trial in life. So the truth gives you access to triumph in life. Identify the problem. Maybe you are struggling with a particular sin. You must admit that, God, I need help. Mm. No. So how, when you identify with that, then you know what to do. You know the kind of association you keep. You know the kind of thing you need to listen to. So identifying the problem is the first process. To transformation. To transformation. Now, having done that, the second process is gather the relevant scripture that address the challenges. That's to take us back to God's word. Right, so sir. the place of God's word can never be overemphasized because it takes the word to determine our ultimate worth in destiny. For instance, even God himself. 
when God trying to create the heaven and the earth in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. He mm -hmm. said, and the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form. Mm -hmm. That is, there was a deformity. Mm -hmm. There was a stop. Mm -hmm. God could not continue in the work of creation until he speak out his thoughts. Mm -hmm. Can you see now? Before God said, let there be light, he first thought of light. Mm -hmm. So, your thoughts determine your ultimate worth in life. And you know how the Bible says that the thoughts of God for us are thoughts of good and not of evil. That's Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Mm. So the thought of God is not of evil. Mm. For instance, Isaiah 55 verse 8 to 9. He said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Mm. It's like as heaven as far to the earth. So what do you do? You need to sit down, find out the scripture. What is the thought of God concerning this problem? Mm. Isaiah 43 verse 26. Let's read that scripture. Okay. Isaiah 43 verse 26. Isaiah 43. Yes. Okay. Verse 26. Okay. Isaiah 43, 26. Yes. Put me in remembrance. Yes. Let us plead together. Yes. Declare thou. Okay. That thou mayest be justified. Now look at the second phrase. Put me in remembrance of my word. After saying that, say, let us plead together. That mm. is. The second part says, declare thou that. Thou may be justified. That means if you don't declare, you'll not be, be justified. justified. Mm. Your justification is in your mouth. Now, Father, Isaiah, have mercy. Now, <laughs> Isaiah 54, verse 17. It's mm. a popular scripture, but many of us, we don't pay attention. Isaiah what? 54, verse 17. Let's okay. take that scripture. Okay. Isaiah 54, verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Now, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. That is the responsibility of God. Okay. Now, read further, ma'am. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Can you see now? Most often time, people neglect this part. Now, for the tongue that rises against you in business, in your marriage, in your career, it is not the duty of God to condemn it. It's your own duty. So imagine if you refuse to condemn the tongue that breaks against you in your place of work, you will just be a victim of attack of the devil. So there is nothing you are looking for that the answer is not in the scripture. So the word of confronting, the word of justification lies in your mouth. So there is nothing you are passing through that the word of God is not there. For instance, a woman was diagnosed of fibroid. At the same time, she was trusting God for fruits of the womb. Maybe for seven years. She found out the scripture. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. Let's read that scripture. First it may help somebody. Okay, sir. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. Yes, it's a popular scripture. Okay. What? Yes. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, okay. which is in you, yes. which ye have of God, and ye are not of your own. Okay, this woman read this scripture. What? Wait a minute. My body your is body the, is, the, is temple the temple of the Holy Ghost. That means Holy Ghost is my landlord. Woo. So Holy Ghost cannot be a landlord over my body and a fiber will be a tenant. You see mindset. You see thinking. So until you begin to see things, the way God said it. So she kept declaring it. I can have a fibroid. Holy Ghost is the landlord of my body. She kept declaring it. And Holy but, Ghost is fire. It's Holy Ghost power. Is fire. It's now, truth. <laughs> but because the faith of her husband was so low, wow. eventually they said do for an operation. Wow. Even in an unconscious state, she kept declaring the word. Mm. Guess what? In the process, this can show that she had a fibroid. As they opened her up in the theater, guess Aye. what? A fibroid turned <laughs> to a fibroid. So the doctor was confused. Mm. He said, Lord, in my 30 years of mercy, mm. I've never seen this wonder. So and God said to that doctor, who happened to be a pastor, also, God said, actually, it was a fiber. Mm. But the way my daughter is confessing my word, mm. I am the Lord who confirmed the word of my servant, mm. who carried out the prediction mm. of my prophet. So if God, if Holy Ghost is the landlord of your body, mm. diabetes cannot be tenant. Mm. Hypertension cannot be tenant. Mm. Cancer cannot be tenant. Mm. I decree today, Maybe you are listening to me now. Any form of tenant, a form of sickness in any part of your body, hmm. according to God's word, your deliverance and healing is taking place now Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. So that woman was able to get transformation based on the renewal of mind over time. 
she spoke life, life into, into her. And then Don't she forget that life. transformation, according to definition, is the process of giving life mm. or a shape right, sir. to something. Mm. So the more you are speaking the word, you are giving a shape. Mm. The more you are speaking the word, you are giving a structure mm. to what is formless. So the word of God is the block needed mm. to build an edified life. The word of God is the block needed yes. to building an edified life. So all you need to do is speaking the word, yes. is speaking shape, speaking form, and speaking life yes. to every situation. Whoa, that's something to hold on to, don't you think so? Let's take a break. So I would like to go on a quick break so we can just ponder on this thing. Now, okay. Pastor has just declared, speak those words right now to every area of your life, okay? So just when we come back from the break, this conversation will continue. Get your cell phone handy so you can call in, contribute, or send an SMS to us. We'll be right back discussing transformation. God bless you. We'll be right back. Or send us email feedback at dovevision.org. Thank you and God bless you. Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us. You're watching Springs of Life on Dove Television. And today we have an interesting topic going on already, and that is transformation transformation well if you join us from the beginning i'm sure you will agree with me that god is interested in our lives being transformed because it will bring glory to his name but if you have just joined us oh uh, i don't know what to say but don't worry we, ha we still have a few uh we still have some time i'm sure you will catch up you will understand like one of the things i picked up from the conversation we had earlier was that to get your life transformed you need faith and faith in god now our pastor in the house um, gave us an acronym of faith and he says that faith is f the f in faith is feeding yourself with the word of god feeding yourself with the word of god because the word of god is life the word of god is light the word of god shapes and forms a particular thing according to the will of the father and then the a says acting on the word you don't just feed you don't just hear this word you must act on it and then the i is imagine god's mind imagine god's thoughts towards that um Thing you're requesting or trusting God for and then he said talking the word you must speak it you don't just hear it you don't just act you don't just imagine that you have imagined you must speak it you must keep talking it and the last is hearing you need to hear the word of God the more of the word of God you hear because that's how your faith is viewed faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God so it's such an interesting time and God has so much to talk to us about. We still have in the studio Pastor David Akoshile. He's a youth evangelist in the Redeemed Christian Church of God in charge of Region 4 and Region 24. Thank you so much, sir, once Thank again for staying with us. Thank and so, child of God, at this time, please get your cell phone handy. Feel free to call the line that will be displayed soon on your TV screen. Call or contribute to our topic of discussion. All right, Pastor. So... As we're going back, um, before we went on the break, you made us understand that the word of God is so important to the shaping of our life. And you said that in building, you know, a li an edified life, that the word of God is the block yes, that we need. Let's look at the characteristics of a transformed life. Now, I will take an example from 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. We talk about the story of Jabez. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. Okay. Are you reading? Okay. okay. First, you could read from yourself. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Chapter 4. Okay. 9 you and 10. Okay. You could, read, you could read from your side, but I just want everybody to, okay. you know, it's it's like studying on TV. Okay. 1 Chronicles chapter 4. 4, 9 and 10. Okay, sir. 
And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Mm. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. Now, verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou would have blessed me indeed, and enlarged my, my coast, coast, and that Anne might be with me. And thou would have kept me from evil, that it might not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Now, there was a prophecy upon Jabez, hmm. which is to, to become honorable in life. And there is a prophecy of enlargement on his destiny. But his name was the problem. The name was reducing his prophecy. Hmm. So, how does Jabez got transformed? He first identified. Mm. that my name is the problem. And you said earlier that the process of transformation is first identified. Identified the problem. So after Jabez identified the problem, the next thing is search for God's word. Proclaiming what God said. And that is why he could declare that God of Israel, that thou may bless me. He knew that when God preached, man, the first declaration was blessing. Mm. So Jabez was quoting Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. So he does have to go back to the manual and reset. This is not the prophecy of my life. So a transformed life, you must identify the problem, understand God's word, and one of the characteristics is there will be a physical change, either in character, in appearance, or in status. It's not a thing that is hidden. In Acts chapter 3, when the man at the beautiful gate, after God touched him, he mm -hmm. got transformed. And one of the process, the Bible said, he stood up, Mm. leaping and shouting for joy. Mm. So everybody can see it. When the transformation takes place, the first transformation may start with him. Mm. When Peter was praying for that man, there was a connection between the declaration and the confession mm. from the man. So thereafter, it responded to the faith, pam, and the testimony comes. So one of the characteristics of a transformed life, it talk about acting out God's word there will be a kind of enlargement. Mm. There will be a kind of advancement. Mm. There will be a kind of a progress. There will be a kind of transformation and a turn around. Just like Psalm 126 verse 1. Right. When the Lord turned turn again, the captivity. The that's transformation. Right. God is interested in transforming our lives. Mm. Now, in, in Psalm chapter 2 verse 4, he that seated in heaven shall laugh. Right. So the daughter of such a God cannot weep Whoa. or cry. Right. Psalm 30 verse 5b, weeping may endure for a night. Mm. Joy, comment. So the, the end product is all about testimony. So it's all about joy and celebration. It starts from within. Yes, ma'am. And then it manifests to the yes, physical. Hallelujah. Right, let's take a call right now. We have Shola who has joined us from Ogun State. Hello, Shola. Thank you so much for calling us. Hello, Shola. Do we have, do we still have you, Shola? Thank you for calling us. Hello. All right, just in case, I think we lost that call. Please call us back, okay? Call the number designated for calls and send an SMS to the number for SMS showing now on your TV screen. Thank you so much. So the word of God comes by one, you hear it. Yes. And then it's like a seed planted in you, begins to transform you internally. And then from there, it manifests that everyone can see it. Yes. Right there in you. And when the transformation takes place, one of the things you will notice, you notice advancement. Okay. Progress. Mm. Protocol breaking. Then you cross a line. You gain speed. You have acceleration. You exert. You have excess. You mm. have abundance. Mm. All right. Let me take this message from... Okay. Uh, message don't, doesn't seem to be complete, but let me say, the person says, good morning, ma. I'm grateful to be listening to this. My faith is now revived. More grace. What about the area of marital settlement? What should one do? All right, this lady is 30. Okay. Now, just like I said, mm. the word of God said, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17 to 18, mm. male and female created ye them. them. So if God made me to be a woman according to God's word, I can't beg for husband. Mm. You need to understand what scripture says. In the beginning, it was not so. It was not so. Mm. In Isaiah chapter 62, mm. verse 4, my land shall no longer be time forsaken. Mm. I shall be called Ezebah, right. for my land shall be, be married. married. My answer to that lady is that you need to get yourself busy with God, mm. and in the process, your Isaac will show up. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much. So we're still looking at the characteristics of a transformed life, even as we, we study the, um, the story of Jabez. Yes, that ma'am. first he identified it, and then it was reflected. Physical, everyone can see that his story is now changed. Yes, and you know what? Also, um, okay, we have a call. Let me quickly take this call, sir. Okay. We have um, Chukuma, who has joined us from Delta State. Hello, Chukuma. Thank you so much for calling us, sir. Hello, Chukuma. Chukuma, can you please turn down the volume on your TV set and talk to us? You are live in the studios now. The volume on your TV set is still quite loud. Please reduce the volume. And then when you're transferred to us right here in the studio, please talk to us. Um, wow. That cannot be. This was the lady that sent a message earlier that says uh, her faith is revived and she's 30 and she's still single. And she said all her age, age group are married and sometimes she feels, she feels like committing suicide. Now, to that lady now, yes. in the process of God's word, mm. when it appears that God is coming too late, mm. it's an indication that God wants that situation to become the latest. Mm. Now, for instance, in John chapter... 11, verse 40 to 44. Mary said to Jesus, I mean, Martha said to Jesus, right. I didn't be you were here before now. That is, your coming is already too late. Mm. And God says, because you don't know. If thou believest, thou shalt see the glory of God. Right. Life is in faces. Why ma and sizes? God make things beautiful in his own time. I pray for that person. In the process of time, the Lord will settle you Amen. and it will make your testimony to become latest in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And you know what? When God transformed, he's doing this for his glory, yes. for his glory. You know how when God transformed the life of um, Saul to Paul, yes, that was a beautiful transformation. Everyone could see because he went about preaching and doing the will of the Father. You are correct. Ma mm. God is interested in our transformation. Yes, ma'am. Let me take this message. This person says, "Morning, sir. Why was John beheaded? Isn't that isn't that he did isn't that he did use the word of God? Or is it that he didn't use the word of God? I'm trying to understand this message, but this person is asking, why was John beheaded by Herod, King Herod? <laughs> now, that particular question, the same John was being described as somebody who carried the same capacity of Elijah. Mm. You can carry something and not use it and not be conscious of what you carry. What mm. led to the beheading of John that John... I mean, peak offense in Jesus. Mm. Because you can see that conversation mm. before that event. Mm. That I was telling disciple, go and tell the master, should we still expect the same person? Is he who, the one or should we expect another? Another he one. He felt Jesus was taking time to come you and get, help out. Do you get it now? The, yes, so when you peak offense, in the process of somebody who's supposed to serve as your savior, you may lose your testimony. May the Lord help us. Let me take this call. You know, something happened over the weekend. I, I had a message related to this. Anyway, Chukuma has called us back from Delta State. Chukuma, thank you so much for calling back. Hello, Chukuma. You're live now in the studios. Please go ahead and talk to us. Good afternoon, madam. Morning to you, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just... I'm mean, enjoying the program in Bill TV. So I just have some prayer. I just need some prayer points. I just need some prayers from the from the man of God. What's your prayer request, sir? What do you want, sir? Uh, well, my prayer request for is for open heavens. Open heavens. In which aspect yeah. of life? In business, in finance. I right. prayed for you now, according to God's word, in Psalm 107, verse 20, he sent out his word, and his word, he led them. Within the space of 14 days, Amen. a favor from people you know and people you don't know shall locate you in the name of Jesus. Amen. That garment on your face that did not make ever to recognize you. You are close to people who can help you, but they don't see you as somebody that needed help. I remove that garment now Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. and I declare your heaven open. Amen. So shall it be. Jesus, wonderful name, we'll pray. Amen. And have your testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
There's a scripture I'm trying to find, so I would like us to, I'd like okay, you to please explain. I think that's in the book of Acts chapter 20. Okay. Uh, Acts chapter 20, when it says, uh, okay, yes, I'm there. Acts 20. Verse what? Verse 30 or 32. Okay. Okay, now 32, and it says, And now, brethren, okay. I commend you to come unto the word of his grace, okay. which is about to build you up okay. and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. So it's telling us here that the word of God can build. I would like you to please explain how the word can build me and what is my inheritance that the Bible is talking about here. But let me take this call, sir. We have Michael. Okay. Michael has called us from Lagos. Hello, Michael. Thank you so much for calling us, sir. Hello, good morning. Morning to you, sir. Yes, I I really, really uh, encouraged this morning by the message uh, of transformation. I have really experienced uh, a transforming, uh, you know, message this morning. Um, I would like to, I don't know, um, the man of God has really done a great job. To be sincere, I am really, really transformed. Amen. I am touched. Amen. I can see something is coming out of me. Amen. Yes, I would like to, I don't know if we can, there's a way I can have a contact with the man of God. I'm also a redeemer, a deacon uh, by God's grace, and I can see that uh, there's something in this man of God that really needs to, to transform the life of many, especially the youth. To be sincere, is a powerful message that really, really support across the youth, not only limited on this, but as many people that are needed to be part of this so that they can call the revelation in this message. To be sincere, I don't know if there's a way I can get a contact of this man All of right. God. Okay, so Michael. That he can also be part of my one of my mentors. All right, Michael. Way. All right, Michael. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling in. Please send us an SMS, okay, to the SMS number on your TV screen, asking for the contact of the pastor for today, and um, hopefully we'll get back to you. Please um, send an SMS to the SMS number, your name, and what your request is, and um, we'll get back to you on that. Thank you so much, sir. So I was okay, looking at, yes, Act 20, verse okay. 32. How does the word of God build me, and what is my inheritance that the word of God is saying that I have an inheritance? Now, the word of God builds, the word of God adds some element that builds. Number one, the word of God has the capacity to illuminate a life. That is, it takes one light from the scripture to end a long night mm. of affliction. It takes one light, light from, the, from scripture the scripture to end a long, long night, night of affliction. How do I mean? Right, In sir. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. First Peter chapter 5, verse 10. Say, but the God of all grace, who are called to the glory according to Christ Jesus, after mm. ye have suffered for a while. A while. Mm. You can suffer, but your suffering should not be more than a while. So any suffering that is more than a while is your fault. Satan has cheated on you. Whoa. So until you find out that scripture, and that was not enough, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. Mm. Say, but our light affliction, which is but for a moment. You can have an affliction. Affliction should be for a moment. You know how the Bible says you have tarried for a, for a long time in this Sad. mountain. So, somebody may say, Pastor, I don't understand the grammar. A mm. moment or, uh, what was the first a while. one? A while. Psalm 30, verse 5b. Mm. Weeping may endure for, for a night. night. Joy, comment in the morning. That is, you can weep over any matter, mm. but your weeping should not be more than one night. Oh. So, until you have this revelation, you discover you have a lot to do. I'm coming out. That's one word to tell yourself. You Whatever where you're going through, out. I'm coming out. And for every it's problem, as an expiring date. Let me just take this call, sir. Okay, man. We have Stephen. Stephen has called us from Abia State. Hello, Stephen. Thank you so much for calling us. Hello, Stephen. You're live. Good afternoon. Good morning. Morning to you, Stephen. Please go ahead. You're live with so. us. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Okay, I'm calling from Omaha. Right. Um, the, and the, the, the topic of uh, transformation is what I, I, I was following you people. Uh, All right, go ahead. What's your question or contribution? Uh, yeah, no, it's about the, it's about the transformation. Mm. 
So I'm happy so much because the transformation, I need it in my family and in my life, most especially my local church at uh, Omaha here. Okay, sir. Uh, mainly, and I ask, I, I, the man of God, please, can you pray so that uh, my pastor in the, in the church might uh, encounter this transformation? All right. But I need it in the church so that the, so that the church of God might grow in my location. Thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you so much, Stephen, for calling us from Umar here in Abia State, sir. God bless you. You okay. know, talking about lives being transformed, um, church being transformed, society being transformed. Okay. Now, for church to be transformed, then the pastor or the leader mm. of that place mm. must also get transformed first from God's word. Okay. Because the God's word has a cleansing capacity, according to Ephesians. Chapter 5, verse mm. 26. It describes the word of God as a cleansing power. Okay. Now, talking about the Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Yes. I talk about number one, the word of God, the capacity to illuminate. Mm. And number one, restoration. There is nothing that is lost that cannot be found according to God's word. Mm. Now, to the people in the society, they said opportunity lost cannot be regained. But mm. that is not true. Okay. Joel chapter 2, 25. And I will restore the years that locusts have eaten. So mm. there is nothing that is lost. Maybe it appears you are walking behind time. It's as if your mate have gone ahead of you. If you stand on God's word, mm. there's what we call compressions of time. Mm. God can compress time in your favor and you find it difficult if you have ever suffered delay before. I prophesied to somebody here today, maybe you're already walking behind schedule. It's as if your mate have left you behind. I decree according to God's word, may God compress time in your favor, in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Especially when it's the set time. You know, listen to that, Ijiu, you know. It was like God can actually um, fast forward. Yes. Now, you want something that might happen, and maybe in 10 years, God can make it even happen now. Yes. All you need to do is declare the word, remind God of his promises, and that can come to pass. Well, we have lots of messages here that I would like to take. Um, this person says, um, um, uh, though you didn't put your name <laughs> or where you have written to us from. But the person says, good morning, sir. Please, I need Bible verses to pray with consigning my business as a realtor. Um, I've been experiencing disappointment from prospective clients. So the person needs um, Bible verses for um, to be successful, you know, to have a transformed um, business. Let's take another message here. Somebody says, more auctions, sir. Okay, fine. Can we quickly just add Bible verses? Now, the basis of that scripture is Joshua 1.8. Okay. And this book of the Lord shall not depart from you, and mm. thou shalt meditate upon it. Mm. And the end product, you have good success. Good success. There are successes. So the more good you read God's, God's God. word, mm. the more you find a good success. Just like I said mm. from that scripture, there is nothing that you lost that, that cannot, cannot be, be found. found Standing in on Christ chapter two, Jesus, verse twenty-five. All right. This person says, "More auction, sir. I am blessed and my faith alleated. Please pray for my dad and sick sister." Um, with heart problem, and my sis is also, my sis is also an SS, and um, also for a divine, for a divinely all round transformation. I don't know where you have written to us from, but we are going to join you shortly in prayers. Okay, so we don't pray for just one person; we can pray for as many that are trusting now, God. Now, concerning the testimony you talk about about SS, yes, sir, it's a very profound testimony. Now, my both parents are AS and AS. I'm okay. SS. Like seriously, now, how but do you I believe gave my life to Christ. When I was growing up, at 16, I had an encounter with God's word. Revelation 1.8. I Revelation believe God wants to liberate somebody with this scripture. Please open your Bible. Revelation 1.8. This is a profound scripture that have kept me over the years. Revelation 1.8. I read here. Okay, sir. I am the Alpha and Omega, mm. the beginning and the end, says the Lord, mm. which is, which was, and which to come, mm. the Almighty. Now, the first phrase. Mm. The Lord said to me, I am the Alpha, that is AA. <laughs> I am the Omega, that is O+. Plus. Mm. Now, you can't find this. That is why the more you meditate on God's word, the transformation. I am the Alpha. The Alpha. I am A. Alpha. That is 
A, 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 A. O, O plus, Omega, O plus. I prophesy now. Hallelujah. I stand on God's word. Everyone with medical conditions, blood-related diseases, I decree according to God's word. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. The God who changed my genotype will change yours now Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Within the space of seven days, access mm. turn to AA mm. in the name of Jesus. Mm. That sick fellow receives strength in your body now. Amen. Receive healing now. Amen. In less than 72 hours, your healing is confirmed. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. What, what did you just hear? There's nothing impossible with God. Yes, ma'am. There is nothing impossible. Um, there are a lot of prayer requests here, sir, that we'll be joining them. We have, I think we have less than three minutes to wrap up, but at okay. the end of the program, we'll just pray for everyone who's trusting God for one miracle or the other. Okay. This lady said, this is Victoria, who was written to us. We don't know where you're writing to us from, but she says she's 41 years old. She does not have a husband, no job, no job after school, and no capital to start a good business. So, Victoria, we join you in prayers. Okay, and we'll pray uh, everything together. We just pray everything together. And this person says, good morning, Pastor. Please, Pastor, I want you to pray for me for healing against asthma. And that's from, well, your name is not here, but you're written to us from Delta State. And someone here has written to us saying, I would like to have the pastor's number. Okay, I'll see if my producer can get that across to you. Maybe that might just be displayed on your TV screen. Now, Susan has written to us from Abuja saying, please, she needs prayers and Bible verse to read for marital settlements. Okay. Um, Susan, I think she's 33, and she says she's enjoying the program over here in, over there in Abuja. And she says uh, she's getting frustrated, but she's getting revived by the message of this morning. Of this morning really? And she would like Bible verse on how to get settled maritally i'd like to take another message here this person says sir please pray for her marriage um they've been experiencing tumult and the fruit of the womb mesdra uh, minister favor and more um is what they are trusting god for so can we quickly um pray for all of these people marital settlement healing open heavens and all i will that. take my prayer from romans chapter 9 verse 28 romans chapter 9 Verse 28. Mm. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. That is compressing the time. Hallelujah. I pray for everyone with marital delay or spare in one area or the other and come to it today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anyone trusting God for one thing or the other, receive your transformation now. Amen. Receive your healing now. Amen. Receive your transformation now. Amen. Receive your healing now Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I see a red light turn to green. Amen. There's somebody listening to me now. There's a particular door you have been knocking before now. Mm. Anytime the door wants to open, when anytime want to get your to your tongue, mm. something happened, mm. and you have to start all over again. Mm. Hear me as I hear the Lord. Mm. The Lord said, go and knock again, because mm. I see the door open. Hallelujah. Instead of one, the Lord will open two doors for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Anyone in the line for Marita said to me, mm. within 90 days, mm. your Isaac will show up. Amen. Within 90 days, your Isaac will show up. Amen. Anyone sick now? Touch that particular place mm. now. As I'm speaking, the healing power of mm. God's word, receive it now Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. For he himself took away our infirmity and bought our diseases. Mm. If he took it, that means you can no longer have it. Mm. I decree your healing is confirmed. Amen. Check it. That pain has done disappear now. Amen. That growth has done disappear mm. now. You that cannot work, stand up and begin to work now. Mm. The deaf ear is hearing mm. now in the name of Jesus. Mm. That pain in your abdomen, check it now. It has just disappeared. Appear now Amen. in the name of Thank Jesus. You, Jesus. So shall it be. Hallelujah. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. What a beautiful time in God's presence today. We just give God all the glory. God Hallelujah. bless you, sir, for a time you have given us. May the Lord increase your anointing Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. And for everyone who has called or sent an SMS asking for pastor's contact now, the number is showing now on your TV screen for counseling. Please be free to copy out the number and you can reach Pastor much later after this timeout on TV. 
God bless you. I know you have been blessed watching today's program. Someone watching from Jaws and someone says that now she knows that it is menopause and not menistop. So she's, her faith has been revived that God has in good stock, good things for her. She would be pregnant this year. Believe Glory me, in God. Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you so much, Pastor. Thank you, Our guest today has been Pastor David Akoshile. He's a youth evangelist in the Redeemed Christian Church of God in charge of Region 4 and 24. And I know you have been transformed listening to today's topic, Transformation. My name is Lilian Ogedegbe, and Springs of Life will be back on the same station and time. God bless you and live a continued, transformed life. It's a continuous thing. God yes. bless you. See you next time. God bless you. Amen.